everyone, I'm Justine Martin and I own Justine Martin Corporation. Uh, so yeah, 10 years ago, uh, 10? 11. 11 this month actually. Who wants to remember an anniversary when someone says to you that you have MS and that you'll never be able to work again? Uh, and I believed him for a period of time. And then I thought, you know what, that's his false belief. That's not mine. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know what I'm capable of. Uh, so, he did suggest one thing to me, and he said, you can have a lot of time on your hands, you better find a hobby. Now, I always wanted to learn how to paint. Anyone here want to learn how to paint? Yeah. yeah. But you haven't made time. And it's like, oh, we'll get around to that when I retire. Mm -hmm. Alright, when, you know, I'm 70 or 80 or 90, I'll retire, I'll <laughs> get around to it. Anyway, all I had was time. I'm going to go and learn how to paint. Sound that simple? I'd drive to a art studio, I'd sit outside, and I wouldn't walk inside. I had such bad anxiety, believe it or not, those that know me in the room probably find that very hard to believe. But my anxiety was so bad that I'd sit in the car crying because I could not walk inside that venue. And I'd drive home crying. And I did that for three to four months. And then one day I went, what are you doing? Just come inside. How bad could it be? made it even worse was the fact that my girlfriend ran the art studio <laughs> and so I knew her. It wasn't as if I was walking into a room where I didn't know anyone and I finally walked into the room and she set me up painting and I took to it like a duck to water. Then we moved from Western Australia over to here in Geelong and I started with uh, the MS uh, art program that they had and a community college out at you would have heard of the Drysdale Neighbourhood Centre. So I started in there. I was the youngest by about 25 years. <laughs> but it didn't worry me because I was socialising and at the beach, sitting at home, looking at four walls by myself every day. So uh, once a week I'd go to each of those. And then six months after uh, picking up a paintbrush, I entered the Drysdale Easter Art Rotary Show and I sold my first piece for $300. Now I've gone from not earning any money, I, in my prior life, um, I was in the weight loss industry and I'd gone in my dream job with uh, Jenny Craig as a program director. So I'd gone from having my own money, independence, to absolutely nothing overnight uh, and solely relying on another human who was not very nice. And so when I sold this piece for $300, that changed my world. I'm like, I still have purpose. Mm. I can create. People smile when they see my artwork. And I can make some money. <laughs> I was making the money bit that you know, really appealed to me as well. So I started painting more and learning more. And I went to the University of YouTube. And I was a sponge. And I was taking it all in. And I used to watch a TV program called Colour in Your Life on Channel 31. And I thought, you know what, one day I could be on that, that TV station. On that that program. So I started painting and then entered lots and lots of awards and, and um, lots of exhibitions and I've won to date about 40 awards which is just mind blowing to me. Um, then I wanted to help more people. So I started and registered Just Art, it's all up here. I actually own four businesses as of last week. Life is very busy. Uh, so there is Just Art, Van Gogh Decals, Resilience Mindset and a new one called Morpheus Publishing which was released uh, last, was it Thursday? Yes. Thursday we registered that. Um, so I'm very excited about that one, look out world. Uh, <laughs> I could split myself into like 20, it'd be great. Uh, so I wanted to help more people and then my health got in the way. So I was all ready to start art wellness classes and in 2011 I was diagnosed with EMS. 2013, 14 and 15 I was I had heart surgeries um, which were fairly major and one of them I nearly passed away from but it didn't get me. And then in 2016 I became very ill. Uh, I started turning purple, I had a thing called the video reticularis and I looked like a zombie which then led me to being diagnosed with melanoma, just by accident. I went to the dermatologist, dermatologist to confirm that it was libido, and then all of a sudden, she's like, when was the last time you had a skin check? She said, oh yeah, it is. Now, there's three things that could cause libido, and that was lymphoma, 
um, rheumatoid arthritis or lupus and she ruled out well, he ruled out the lupus and the rheumatoid arthritis. So I was spinning for a couple of weeks going, oh my God, I've got lymphoma. I uh, went to the dermatologist and she said, yes, it's definitely Levidio. So I was sitting there spinning out going, oh my God, I've got lymphoma. And then she's like, when was the last time you did a skin check? And I said, please go and have the skin check. Um, and I'm like, oh, my former GP did one a while ago. She goes, oh, you're here now. I've got your gear off. Let's check. Had a melanoma in my leg. Didn't even know. Didn't even know to look at your leg. I was worried about my back. So I had um, that removed. Then I had to go to a haematologist, and by that stage I had decreased lung capacity. I couldn't move my fingers properly or my toes. I couldn't paint. And that was an issue for me. So painting had become my form of meditation. I lose myself in the studio, and I couldn't do that. Then I started getting lots and lots of tags on Facebook of um, a woman overseas whose name is Iris Scott. Look her up, she is amazing. And she finger paints with oils. But oh, I wonder if I could do that with acrylic. Anyway, I gave it a crack. And yeah, I can. I still make money. And, <laughs> and sold it, sold that, that piece. And I'm like, right, oh, I could do some more. And just lost myself in the studio. So all the plans of teaching and that got put on hold. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do that one day. Just at the moment, I need to concentrate on me and getting over the melanoma and a thing called mixed cryoglobial anemia. So that was in the December 2016. Then they kept testing. And then in January 2017, I was diagnosed with chronic lymphocystic leukemia and small lymphocystic lymphoma. So I had three primary cancers at once. And then I was in for the fight of my life because it was stage four. So again, that all, got, all the artwork got kind of put on hold and entering exhibitions, I still tried to do it and I'd go out with a Hickman line in my chest and still try to produce some art, which I did, just not to the standard that I would have liked, but it didn't deter me. So then um, I recovered and I'm in full revision from it all uh, and have been for the last about three, four years now, but I still am an active patient at Andrew Love and got an appointment coming up on Monday and I'm always been nervous about that and I've got an appointment for an MRI on Monday so I need, you know, a planner just to keep track of my medical issues. Then I went, you know what, I can start teaching. So two and a half years ago, I opened up Just Art Wellness classes and uh, they were born helping other disabled people. So I'm an officially and I'm a disabled person nice little car park out the front. There's some perks to having everything that's wrong. And um, off I went with the Just Out Wellness classes. And um, they run three days a week. So if you know anyone that has a disability that could do some art therapy, they come in, they go at their own pace. It's a really friendly, great environment. Um, and that business was born. I have a gallery out at Cafe Zoo in Drysdale. Um, so if you're ever looking for somewhere nice Sorry, Kim. So we nice <laughs> to eat savoury foods. Um, Cafe Zoo is a place to go and you can have a look at the art out there. And then there's all these cards. So all these cards are my artwork. Some of them have been finger painted. Some of them are with pen work and others are with a paintbrush. And they're available out there all the time. And we're trying to get them into a few more locations. So maybe you have a location that they can go into. Uh, so they're $3 each, $6 for $15 or $13 for $30. Um, and they tick over quite nice. So then from that, everyone kept saying to me, what's your secret? Why have you, um, you know, why are you so positive all the time with everything that's gone wrong in your life? Why are you so positive? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. So I really had to put some thought into how come I'm so resilient. And then when I did and started exploring that, resilience mindset was born. And so from resilience mindset, that business, is expanding at a rapid rate and I do resilience consulting. So if you're facing an adversity in your life, whether it is you're in a relationship that you want to get out of, you're in a job that you don't want to be, you want to start your own business, you don't know which direction to head, I've actually given a few clients over the business and healed in the last uh, 12 months, um, then I'm the person to contact. There isn't an adversity that I pretty much haven't faced and gotten through it. So the key to adversity, or the key to resilience, is how quickly you bounce back from the adversity that you are facing. And I'll give you the coping mechanisms to do that. So there's a flyer here that you can book in. 
um, with adversity. And I do gift vouchers as well. Maybe you know someone, your best friend or a sister or a brother that really needs some help. So from resilience <laughs> mindset then came some books. Uh, so this was my first co-authored co book that came out last year, Release the Shackles. I've got another one that's pre-sale at the moment called Courage and Confidence. And if you hop on my website, you can see that. And then there's another one coming out in May uh, for Business in Heels. And I've had the privilege of painting the front cover for that. So there it is. <laughs> But that's fantastic. You know that old saying, say yes and then work out how to do it? Yeah, well that, that was me with this one. So I'm like, hey, I can do that, no worries. <laughs> but, but I am. Um, and then from the books, I'm uh, writing my own book, which hopefully will be out at the end of the year, and that will be published through Morpheus Publishing. In the last 12 months, I've done, um, I've written and illustrated a children's book. And um, that's the first one that will be published, and that's all about quality, and it's called Same, Same, But Different. Um, so, and it's a bit quirky. Now, from that um, is Resilience Mindset Podcast, which is really, really new. We've been, we launched about a month ago, or we did on the 1st of February, yeah. Um, and all those stories will eventually go into a book as well, published by Morgan. Uh, in there. And then from um, my artwork and the resilience side of thing and, and everything in there is Van Gogh decals. So my artwork actually is produced on large decals to go on caravans and camper vans for people that are struggling with their memory. Or if you want to quirk up your van or your car or your mobility scooter or your wheelchair or like my house, the whole front windows of the house are covered in decals. My house is branded. You can imagine what colour. <laughs> <laughs> my house is uh, inside is this and outside matches it as well and there's a five foot eight sculpture in the front yard uh, of it so um, that's Van Gogh Decals now in the last 12 months I launched another section out of Jazra which kind of pulls into resilience mindset as well which is finger painting for grown ups I wanted to share with others on how to finger paint now this one's finger painted, and this one's finger painted. And they just finished off with some Costco pens. I need a volunteer. Don't all jump out. <laughs> Kim! <laughs> I love to be volunteer to help. <laughs> so we're just going to have a really quick dabble. I'm going to pop that on. Over my neck. <laughs> I don't personally paint yeah. with gloves on, and my nail technician hates me. Because I've been every two weeks getting more. Uh, okay, so, uh, finger painting for grown up um, classes, they happen on a Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And there is a fly here if you're interested in coming along and bring a friend. And you will walk out with a finished piece. And you will walk out with a piece that you are proud to hang on your wall because I will not let you walk out <laughs> of the studio unless it's uh, good enough to, to hang. So, I've just got a blank canvas and here's some paint. Who finger painted at school? Yeah. And who was told at school that they couldn't paint? Or that they can't draw a straight line? Me. Or that they're not creative. Or that they're not creative. I was too heavy handed with my colouring in. <laughs> you crossed the line. <laughs> Yes. 
And I walked out with um, a similar one like this um, because I've got a dash hound as well. We both have dash We both have dashies. Uh, two sausage dogs. So I walked, I love them. So and I walked out with one similar to this with different colours. And I love it. I, I was actually surprised as well, like how good I actually did. They're all good. Mm. Like I said, no one walks out with a bad piece. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to own a ladies, <laughs> I used to own a ladies fashion boutique 22 years ago. And um, I would, if someone came in and tried something on and it looked absolute crap on them, I'm like, please don't buy that. And say to them straight away, please don't buy that. And they'd be like, what? And I'm like, don't buy it. Because it was a small country town, and if they were going to go to a event and they looked terrible, <laughs> and they said, oh, where'd you get that from? And they said, oh, James Fashion Heart. No way, that was bad publicity. So I've always been honest and, you know, walk out with something that's good. So you can pick your colours. And I want you to slap them on. <laughs> Don't be afraid of the paint. Like I said, no more. So try and aim for something like that. <laughs> <laughs>
and I spent a lot of time lying on my bed and my bed used to look like a fishbowl and I didn't want to put curtains in it so I got the Van Gogh decals and I put um, one way vision on there <laughs> but it's my artwork on the outside of it so I do ink paintings as well and so they're all those colours but they're on the front and so I can lie down and watch people and my front garden is full of sculptures that I've made. And a giraffe. And yeah, and a giraffe. <laughs> and, um, and it was amazing to see how many people stopped and actually took photos of it. So, uh, yeah, you can't be certain. So <laughs> I'll have a chat afterwards. Yeah, have a chat. Yeah. And I do hens parties and, you know, all of that stuff as well. So, anyway, I've probably taken up enough of uh, your time. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk tonight and uh, enjoy the rest of the year.